Atlas Fallen is out right before the big games release next month. So should you spend your hard earned money on this or save it for next month? Well, either way, it's not going to matter because you'll be done with this game before next month rolls around. The entire game takes about 15 to 20 hours to complete. There's very little replay value here. Now, there is an online only co-op mode, which might add some additional playability. I personally haven't tried it, but an action RPG to beat alongside a friend might be worth it for some. Keep in mind, there is no crossplay and there is no public matchmaking. So if you have no friends, you'll have to go at it alone. The game reminds me of Forspoken, except I do feel like the combat here is better. The combat is more challenging. The mechanics are interesting and less repetitive. The game also has more of a RPG element to it, meaning you have more freedom on how you want to complete the game. There's also a lot more side quests to explore and complete. The map does open up fairly early on and you're more or less free to just roam around and complete the game in your own little order. Now the map itself seems to be on the small side and the game isn't too long like I said. There is an interesting way of traveling around the map by sand surfing and jumping around. I would say the movements around the map climbing to certain landmarks is a big part of the gameplay here as well. The storyline here isn't the greatest. Forspoken which I compared this to had a corny storyline and dialogue but at least it was intriguing and pulled you in. Atlas Fallen, the story and dialogues are just cookie cutter boring. I found myself just skipping through all of it. The game looks average when it comes to the graphics. Don't expect crazy visuals here. It's just okay, just passable. I mean, some of the last gen games like Red Dead Redemption 2 are much better looking than Atlas Fallen. Keep in mind, this is a current gen game, so it's not releasing on Xbox One and PS4. The environments in this game do have some variations but it's not a whole lot it's mostly all desert there also isn't any dynamic weather you'll pretty much see the exact same clouds when you look up in the sky the game comes in at about 40.5 gigabytes on the series snx and about 21 gigabytes on ps5 that's interesting how it's half the size on ps5 i've never seen that big of a difference before loading times for this are on the slower side by current gen standards all three consoles take close to a minute to load from dashboard to in-game. The PS5 wins by just a few seconds. Fast travel isn't instant. There is a short loading time. It takes seven seconds on the Series X, eight seconds on the Series S, and nine seconds on PS5. Where Xbox really shines is quick resume. You can get back into Atlas Fallen in only nine seconds on the Series S and 13 seconds on the Series X. PlayStation 5 does have quick resume to speed up the process that skips all the menus and takes 27 seconds to continue the game. Xbox Series S does not have any graphic modes for Atlas Fallen. There's just the one default and thank god it's performance mode with 60 FPS. The game does look blurry on the Series S though and has less details. Series S does target 1080p dynamic but it's more or less closer to 800p and it's a pretty solid 60 FPS without any major performance issues. The Series X and PS5 do have two modes to choose from, performance mode and quality mode. Performance mode is 60 FPS, the resolution and graphics details on the more powerful X and PS5 is better than the Series S. There's more details, the resolution is 1440p dynamic, but likely drops close to 1080p. Now when I first looked at performance on the Series X, it scared me. I was seeing close to 45 FPS in performance mode. This seemed odd since the Series S holds a stable 60 FPS. I mean, the thumbnail that looked like this would have got a lot of people to click. But in reality, once I restarted the game, applied the day one patch, the frame rate was much better. The game does target 60 FPS on the Series X in performance mode. Now it's not a solid 60 FPS. There are some minor drops into the high 50s. Not bad enough for you to notice anything while you're playing, but there are drops. The PlayStation 5 performance is better. It's actually a solid 60 FPS with very rare frame drops. I saw 59 maybe once or twice, but that's really it. So overall in performance mode, the frame rate on the PS5 is the most stable. Series S comes in second and Series X is in last place. Both the Series X and PS5 have quality mode. Quality mode bumps up the resolution to 4K dynamic. 
there is a bit more detail here as well the frame rate is now locked to 30 fps in terms of the resolution both consoles are identical the series x in quality mode is 30 fps most of the time but there are some stuttering and miter drops the ps5 on the other hand is a solid locked 30 fps so even in quality mode ps5 is slightly better between performance mode and quality mode, I would recommend the 60 FPS performance. This is action adventure, fast paced, lots of screen movement. So you're gonna immediately notice that better frame rate. It's just so much better in 60 FPS. To demonstrate, watch the side-by-side -side footage of performance versus quality. Now, if I slow down the footage to half, you can easily see the difference. I found myself playing better when I was in 60 FPS mode versus 30. In the 30 FPS quality mode, it just feels very sluggish. There seems to be an input delay. Now for the rest of the video, I have some more side-by-side -side gameplay of the Series S versus Series X versus PS5. The frame rate counter is shown at all times. You're also going to get to hear the actual sound from the game and not some garbage music that other YouTubers throw over their comparisons. 